Marco Rubio was at a Republican event in South Carolina, and he explained what kind of foreign policy he favors. And perhaps as important as anything else, by rallying the world not just to contain radical jihadists, but to defeat them. Yeah. When people ask what should our strategy be on global jihadists and terrorists, I refer them to the movie Taken. Have you seen the movie Taken? Liam Neeson? He has a line, and this is what our strategy should be. We will look for you, we will find you, and we will kill you. Okay, he's serious. He's not kidding. Now, oftentimes on this show, we jokingly discuss the Republican Party and what their views are on foreign policy. And I've said things along the lines of, well, you know, the real world isn't a Chuck Norris movie. The real world isn't a cheesy 1990s Steven Seagal flick. That's not how it works. And, you know, it's tongue-in-cheek, it's ha-ha, I'm partially serious, but of course partially joking, because in my mind, I think, well, I may disagree with the Republicans, but they're not dumb enough to really think the world is like that, right? Where it's Steven Seagal and he's taking on a hundred bad guys and somehow wins and it's pure good versus pure evil. I mean, they're not that silly, right? Well, he just showed you right here. It turns out they do believe that. They absolutely believe that. His face was stone cold serious when he said that, and the audience started cheering. Yeah, 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 that's right. We're a good guy. We're like Liam Neeson, and everybody else is like the bad guy. That's how the world works. There's no nuance, man. There's no shades of gray. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. If that's the, the view you have of the world that we live in, you're not qualified to be a fucking manager at an Arby's. Okay? That is... That's so mind-numbingly simplistic. So here are a few questions for Marco Rubio. Because again, I think he really believes it. You tell me. You saw his face. You saw the way he made that point. So, uh, look, what we need to do is kill the terrorists. That's our foreign policy goal. That's what we do. We kill the terrorists. It's where the good guys are the bad guys. Okay, Marco. Where? Where do we kill them? That's question number one. Where do we kill them? Uh, well, we should keep killing them in Iraq, and Afghanistan, in Syria, and Somalia, and Yemen, and Pakistan. Uh, why not go further out? I mean, you just said, let's kill the terrorists. There are terrorists in, there are terrorists in Mali. Should we invade Mali? There are terrorists in Libya. Should we invade Lib Libya? There's jihadist organizations in Indonesia. Should we invade Indonesia? Uh, you know, we, th we heard the other day there's slave labor going on in Malaysia. Should we invade Malaysia? I mean, you want me to continue here? How about all the, the people who were terrorists that were essentially on our side and are on our side? Especially during the Cold War, we supported a plethora of fascist dictators all around the world because we viewed them as like, oh, at least they're not communists, so let's support the fascist guys. And we still support dictators to this day. So, so uh, what, when you say, let's kill the terrorists, kill it, what does that mean? What does that mean? How about... You know, like in Brunei, for example, which is our ally who we just put in the TPP deal. They just implemented Sharia law. Wouldn't that be considered uh, terrorism? Because when, when they put Sharia law into place in Afghanistan, we went after the Taliban ruthlessly. And Al-Qaeda, of course, who at the time was uh, embedded in the region. So if we can fight to stop Sharia in Afghanistan, why wouldn't we fight to stop it in Brunei? Do you want to continue going down this road? There's a, a 150 different countries where you can say, okay, that person's a terrorist, that person's a terrorist. So it's no longer the case that the way war works is, hey, there's w one place, one country's army, we are officially at war with them, one nation versus another nation. It no longer works like that. In Marco Rubio's world, he said, uh, we kill the terrorists, just like Liam Neeson. We find them, we kill them, and that's it. So then why wouldn't we? Should we put drone armies all throughout Africa, all throughout the Middle East? Why not... Look, there are some some uh, terrorism cells in in Europe, for example. There are some pockets of uh, radical Islam. Do you want to drone f certain areas of France while we're at it? Hey, while we're at it, why not? Why would we stop there? Why not do droning in the United States of America? Because if you only care, oh, are, are they terrorists? They're terrorists. Let's go after them. So then, it, why would we limit it to just Islamic terrorists? There are groups. We covered a, a neo-Nazi group in northern Florida that was just busted up recently. We've spoken about sovereign citizens in the United States of America who who have done attacks, like on the Georgia courthouse. How about different KKK chapters in America? There's hundreds of them. So why not? 
uh, ha continue our drone warfare here, have a flying robot army of death that we have the base in Alabama, and every once in a while they do a, they do a run to Idaho and blow up a few acres with some people in there who we think are bad guys. This is your view of the world? This is how we act? And by the way, what happens when we're the terrorists? What about that? What about when there's some guy operating a drone in Las Vegas, and that person blows up the wrong people in Pakistan? I mean, we've covered stories where they, they made the choice to kill people at Taliban operatives' funerals, knowing there were women and children there. But they figured, well, look, it's a Taliban operatives' funeral, there's going to be other Taliban guys there, so we don't care that we're going to kill women and children in the process, so let's just blow it up anyway. When they blew up a grandma picking vegetables in, in a field in, I believe it was Pakistan, when they blew up a, a wedding procession, uh, these are all stories that we've reported on, uh, and... There's a variety of them. They're, they happen all the time. How about when we just killed an American civilian and an Italian civilian who were hostages by Al-Qaeda? By your own logic, well, we gotta get the terrorists when, when, when they're acting bad. Well, then why wouldn't you authorize an attack on our own guys who are operating the drones in Las Vegas? They are terrorists, right? They killed civilians for a political reason, a political ideology. That's the textbook definition of terrorism. Or do you think, oh, when we do it, it's okay? I'm sure you're in that camp, right? But why why would you draw these these lines when you made very clear right there in your speech, this is apparently a Liam Neeson movie, where we, just, we go get the bad guys, that's what we do. Well, there's a lot of bad guys all over the fucking place, man. A lot of the bad guys are our allies, right? Would this guy support doing a, a drone strike on Bibi Netanyahu when he slaughters civilians in Gaza? How about that? Oh, you wouldn't do that, right? Well, again, because when we're the good, when we do it, we're the good guys by definition, so it's okay. So essentially, what he's talking about is give us the United States government a green light to kill whoever we want, whenever we want, and you can't come after us through the international court, through any legal system or any legal process at all, and we get to continue to do terror on others, and you you have no uh, recourse. We get to do whatever we want to everybody else, and they can't do anything to us. Well, then I ask Marco Rubio, who really are the bad guys and who really are the good guys in that scenario? Now, see, this is the problem with, with the, this style of ultra-conservative thinking. It's stupid. It's stupid. I mean, you boil it down to, to what it is, and, and, and you take a look at, logically speaking, what it uh, amounts to, and you go, oh, we're dealing with fucking simpletons here. We're dealing with people who don't look at the world in an objective way, who don't think that actions matter over tribalism and ideology. These, these are people who are not fit not only not to be politicians, they're not fit, like I said before, to be a manager at Arby's.